Darren Sharper used to be an NFL star. In fact, he was the safety for the New Orleans Saints. And last year, he was convicted of rape. He was convicted of raping nine different women in four different states. Now, those states included Louisiana, Arizona, California, and Nevada. Now, again, he has been convicted, but parts of his sentence or the agreement for his uh, post-prison deal are fascinating to say the least. So he's going to have to deal with quite a bit, all right? So he has to deal with lie detector tests, sex offender treatment, GPS tracking, no more drinking alcohol or going to bars. He's not allowed to do any online dating or communicate with women in any type of in intimate way through the internet. So these are things that he's going to have to deal with for a very long time after he gets out of prison. But another really interesting thing is something known as penile... Uh, it's like a penile monitor thing. I can't pronounce the Personal word. Personal graph? Yeah. I'll Something do my along best. those I'll lines. I'll do my best. So let me tell you what it is. So Sharper will have to undergo, also undergo, penile plethysmograph tests, a process that measures blood flow to the penis in order to determine the level of sexual arousement he receives after viewing explicit images. Now, what kind of explicit images is he going to look at? There could be images that are just general sexually explicit images to people having sex. There might be images where someone is being forcibly raped. And the authorities in that case would monitor to see whether or not he gets aroused while looking at those types of images. Now, it's unclear what the authorities would do if he actually does get aroused by it. But the question is, does it make sense for someone to undergo this type of monitoring after they serve a prison sentence? Okay, and it's also... I suspect will be enormously ineffective for reasons I'll explain in a minute. Uh, first, uh, some background on this case is interesting. The cops actually could have cracked down on Sharper uh, a long time ago, um, and and there's good evidence that they didn't. And part of the reason was because he was rich and powerful. He's uh, it was actually a very good football player uh, for the Saints, uh, and for a long time I, I knew him as a football fan. Mm -hmm. uh, and and so when women accused them, the cops. Uh, we're like, well, he's powerful. He's going to bring in his lawyers, etc. And they were a little bit more careful in pursuing the charges. So uh, we wish the cops had, had done a better job in pursuing me in the first place. Now, a lot of this GPS monitoring and the not drinking alcohol and all that stuff, in a normal sentence, I'd be like, no, look, dude, just have him serve a sentence and be done with mm -hmm. it, right? I, I don't like all this extra punishment afterwards. In this case, he raped nine women in so, four different states. Yeah, so. Cry me a river about how you can't drink, go to a bar anymore, or, or get junk, drunk as much as you'd like to. Now, I think you could even have a legitimate debate as to whether that's, uh, you know, proper or not after he serves a sentence. Mm -hmm. Okay, but in this case, I think the more interesting part of it is the, what you bring up, Anna. We're going to see if he's aroused by certain things. What do we? So is he never supposed to be aroused again? It's. I mean, not only. Is it a weird request of the state of someone, mm -hmm. even as as heinous as his actions have been? But it's almost like to, to to take his humanity away. I don't look. He took a lot of people's dignity and and you know, et he cetera. He victimized a lot of people. He did. Yeah. So it's not like we have any sympathy for this guy. Don't make us have sympathy for this guy. Yes. Okay. So let me elaborate on that further. I have absolutely no sympathy for this guy. But when it comes to justice, I want justice that works, right? I mm -hmm. want it to be somewhat punitive and I want it to be somewhat or not somewhat completely rehabilitative, right? Mm -hmm. So in this case, several states have decided that this type of monitoring is actually ineffective and it doesn't prove anything. I'll give you an example. There's an entire genre of pornography that involves uh, uh, simulated rape, right? Mm -hmm. So what are you going to do? Are you going to criminalize people who are into that type of pornography, right? And also, just because someone is aroused by that type of pornography or those types of explicit images, it doesn't mean that they're going to go out and carry the crime. And by the way, he already carried the crime. And the monitoring that you have in place already, the GPS tracking, making sure that he doesn't you know, live in certain places or go online and date that way, I think that those are enough safeguards to prevent him from committing the crime again. I think it's a weird thing to say that uh, you're you're turned on by this and hence we will view your future actions yes. uh, with uh, with a certain degree of suspicion, right? I'm all for punishing his past actions as as severely as we we can, right? But his future actions I fear is a is a different category mm -hmm. uh, altogether. And um, and there's studies that show by the way that um, 
if you watch uh, porn, you might be less likely to commit sexual violence. And in the case of this kind of porn, I might even be more sure. I don't know, mm -hmm. right? And and I would want to study it because perhaps that's how they get it out of their system. The porn is so they don't actually do the act. It could be the opposite, yeah. but I certainly wouldn't want to assume it one way or another. So what I think is interesting about this entire situation is that if you look at the prison sentence alone, a lot of people are arguing that he's getting a sweetheart deal because he raped nine women. He drugged them and he raped them in four different states. So how much prison time is he going to serve? So it's going to be about eight and a half years in federal prison, right? Mm -hmm. And since he committed these crimes in a few different states, he's going to have to serve out prison sentences in those states as well. Sharper will comply or land back in prison in Arizona or Louisiana or both to serve at least another 14 years behind bars before returning to the same conditions, mm -hmm. right? So he could get 14 years if he reneges or if he breaks any of the agreements that he made about his post prison sentence mm -hmm. right so if he refuses to do a lie detector test if one of these states decide that they want to do the you know the monitoring and he says no I don't want to do it he's going to go back to jail for 14 years but in federal prison he will serve eight and a half years and some people are saying well he's getting less than a year for every rape that he committed is that fair mm -hmm. so I think that this is a way that prosecutors tried to work it out to make it seem like no he didn't get a sweetheart deal we're basically going to destroy the rest of his life yeah well and by the way if they're going to do these tests finally to the point of it being ineffective all he'd have to do is you know he's a guy he only has a certain amount of arousal in him. If he yeah. gets that arousal out of his system before he goes to do these tests, likely he won't get very aroused at all. Right. By any of it. So it's interesting. While Sharper has consented to such testing under the plea deal, many of the medical and legal communities don't put much stock in it. The American Psychiatric Association years ago called the device unreliable, in part because men can feign responses during a PPG test by concocting images in their minds. So yeah, they could think of something unsexy, I guess, and the image won't really do anything for them. But besides which, let's say they do get aroused by it, I don't think that that tells you anything about a person. Think about, there's a freaking genre of pornography out there like that. That doesn't mean everyone who watches that porn is going to go out there and rape someone. Yeah, no, the whole point of porn is that it's a fantasy, it's not real. Mm -hmm. So if you're judging people based on whether they have that fantasy, it is enormously unfair.